Hey guys, welcome to Sylvia's Table, where there's always room for one more. Today we are gonna do something very quick, but it takes a long time to cook. So I'm gonna go ahead and get started and show you the first part of it and how you put it together. I'm gonna tell you how to cook it and hopefully this evening come back and show you how wonderful it is. My son Davis loves cube steak rice and gravy. Um, and this is one of those recipes that I've had forever and I forgot about it sort of. We haven't fixed it in a long time. So the last time I did, he was like, why, are, why have we not eaten this lots and lots of times? Why don't we fix this like once a week? So anyway, I'm going to do that today and it's called um, a cube steak casserole. So I'm going to start with a little bit of olive oil and I'm going to put that in the pan and then I'm going to take my cube steak and I'm going to salt and pepper it on one side because when I put it in the pan, I'll do the other side. And all we're going to do here is we're going to brown it um, on both sides. I am not flouring it. Okay. So it's actually a little bit healthier on that side. Um, you also are going to need some, um, cream of mushroom soup. I'm going to do a double recipe. So I've got two cans of this. I'm going to use two cans of water. Um, and I also have um, the Lipton onion soup or you can get the store brand. Aldi brand is really good. Um, and get two of those, um, two packets, one box, two packets. Um, so we're going to put this in as soon as this heats up. All I'm going to do is brown the meat. Um, and then I'm going to put it in a casserole dish. Um, I'm also going to use a small one that I'm going to be able to share. Um, I'm going to share it with mom. So I'm going to take this and put a little bit of olive oil spray in it. Um, and whenever the meat gets browned, I'm going to put it in this container. So that shouldn't take too awful long and it's heating up. All right, we are sizzling. You are not completely cooking these things. You are just browning them on both sides. That's all you need to do. Once you put them and flip them over, give them a good little shake of salt and pepper. To give them that flavoring. These are gonna be so tender when they come out of the oven. You are going to absolutely love them. And for those of you who don't wanna bread and do um, the cube steak the traditional way, this, I'm telling you, this is awesome. I'm gonna go ahead and prepare my pans. I've already sprayed this one with some olive oil. This is gonna be mama's little, little dish. And then this one is for us here. And that's basically all you do. You're gonna brown it so that both sides look kind of like that. See how it's got a little bit of the brown on it? And a little bitty piece, that's gonna be real tender. I like the little pieces. Little pieces when you fry them too are the best because they have more, <laughs> more of the fat and breading on them. I shouldn't eat that, but I do, I love it. Absolutely love it. Something about flour and grease. Makes a Southern girl say, yes. All right, I'm gonna give a shout out to Carissa Daniels. Hey, honey. I, uh, I appreciate you sharing and asking your church ladies to join. Um, Y'all be sure to share and, um, what is it called? Subscribe to my YouTube channel. I'm so excited I got over 50 people. Woo! -hoo! I don't know what all that means, but my son says it's a good thing. So anyway, all right, these are about brown. I'm gonna take them and just put them right in there where I greased up the, um, the container. Just lay them in there. Make it like a puzzle piece so that they all kind of fit together. And I'm gonna make sure I've got enough for mom and have a little bit too. You know what, I might have to open another pack and that's fine. I'll do that, I'll open another pack for her and do that one later. See Miss Sylvia, get to go spend a lot of time with her today. We're going to the doctor. A little check up. All right, so now that I've got all of those in there, I'm gonna take that off of the heat. And then I have my two um, cream of mushroom soups. You just plop it over the top of these steaks. And then I'm gonna put 
put two cans probably of um, water on here. You can get creative and say, well, I'm gonna use broth or whatever. You don't need to. There's lots of flavor coming through in this thing. No, no need to get all creative on this one, but you can. Hey, I like creativity. All right, I'm gonna take both of these cans and put them full of water. I'm gonna switch them around a little bit so that I have plenty. Might take only, well, it's, gonna, it's only gonna take about one and a half. What you want it to do is you want it to come up to the edges of the steak, but you don't want it to be too soupy, okay? I'm just spreading out all of this soup all over. And see, I just put one can in there. I don't know if you can see it, but you can see how the water comes up at the edges. That's all you need. So you judge it. Don't be spilling the thing full of water. You'd be having super, super nastiness. And I'm also gonna put a can of mushrooms on top. I'm only gonna put it on half of it probably. No, I'll put it all the way across. Davis can just pick them out. He hates mushrooms. And I did too when I was his age. I don't know what it is. I don't know why your taste buds change, but I love mushrooms, especially the cooked in something like this. And then here is the magic sauce. This is that um, Lipton onion soup. And I'm gonna just sprinkle that all over the top. And I've got two packets of it. Oh, this just makes it so good. And there's two ways you can cook this. The fast way and the slow way. Of course, you know, low and slow. That's the Southern girl's mantra, mantra, however you say that word. You think an English teacher could say that. But I am going to then take some foil and I'm gonna cover this. Be sure that you either do it in a casserole dish that you have a cover to, or that you can cover with aluminum foil. Once I cover this, and yes, Jane Simpson, I said foil, not foil, uh, because that's the way I say it. But I'm gonna cover this, and I'm going to put it in my oven, and I've got it on a delayed cook. So I want it to be ready about six o'clock tonight. So I set mine to come on later because I've got to run out and I got to spend some time with Miss Sylvia. But when I come home, this is gonna be ready. So I'm excited about that. Um, that I don't, after this, I don't have to do anything. And that took me, what, five minutes to put together? So you could do this either on your lunch break or something like that, put it in the oven, delayed time, and have it come on. Um, it's gonna be 250, 250 degrees. I know that's low, trust me. And you're gonna cook it for three hours. Don't open the foil until three hours is up. When you pull it out, let it rest for a second, then uncover it, and if you've got some rice um, and a vegetable, that's it, there's your supper. Um, because this makes a really good gravy that you can put over the rice as well. But if you are in a hurry, you can also do it at 350 degrees for about an hour or hour and a half. Um, it's just better if you do it slow. Um, it, it gets more tender and the flavors are just unbelievable. So hopefully I'm gonna be able to come back to you this evening um, and I will video maybe Davis taking a bite. So y'all have a great day. Love y'all. See you in just a little bit. So here is the finished product. See how it looks? Looks kind of ooky, but it sure is good. There's rice. There's Steve. Hopefully he'll enjoy it. And it's awfully tender. You just scoop it out. Get you a big piece. Put you some of that gravy on there. Awesome. It's good stuff, isn't it, Steve? It is. <laughs> y'all have a great night. Love y'all.